Remember this polynomial equations challenge from Desmos? And it doesn't want to go there for me. 5B dj. Uh, log in. All right, this was our session that we were on. So I'm going to pick on, I added an extra student at the bottom to see if I could restart the session, and I couldn't. So we'll bring on this one. Mm-hmm. 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 Nope. Nope. Uh, I'll show them that. Yep, that's the idea behind that one. All right, so we had one where we were supposed to come up with an equation. I think it was this one. Nope. It was third degree polynomial, so it has to be this one. So let's view this one. All right, so this is the one you're looking at, number one. We are asked to find an equation with the, the cubic equation with these zeros. So what did you come up with for your cubic equation? She's doing the other side, yep. Is it 7x squared plus 36? Minus 36? Oops. Squared. Minus 36. All right, so we did, a well, we did well. Let me change that for two projector mode so you can see it. Oops. Didn't mean to hit squared. Go away. Boy. There. Let me go to projector mode here. Okay, so we did a good job. We got that. Now, when they ask us for a different cubic function, different than this one that goes through these same, same three points, what are we going to do? So they're asking us for a whole other equation that goes through those same three points. I like that answer. Let's multiply everybody by the same number. What number do you want to multiply by? Two. Okay, so we're going to get a 2x cubed. But we have to multiply everybody by the same number. So plus 14x squared minus, and 2 times 36? Did we get the same equation, or same, same zeros? Okay, so this one now has a GCF. Let me zoom out so you can see it. So we had our orange equation to begin with, and now we have a red equation on top. What did it do to it? If I can change my range a little bit to make it make more sense. Stretched it. Good. Is that surprising? Let's make this like negative 100 to 100. Oops, that's too far. Let's go negative 10 to 10. Went the wrong way. And this a negative 100 to 100. There. Can we see it now? Same zeros, right? But we elongated it. This red graph is much taller than the orange one. Okay? They have the same zeros, same factors. So if I had to factor this guy out, what's the very first thing I would do? Yeah, factor a GCF of 2 out, divide every term by 2. 
okay? They're the same graph but in disguise, and one's a lot taller than the other one. Make sense? Okay. Number two, we had to um, write a fourth degree polynomial, okay? Tell me about that fourth degree polynomial. Let's go to this next one. What did we come up with? To the fourth. But minus 7x cubed. Plus x squared, right? Plus 63x. And finally, minus 90x, or minus 90. Okay? Good, you got it. Okay? Now, before we did anything, once you have that equation, you can tell me, because you know from a previous activity where we, we explored, the leading coefficient is what? 1. So what's it doing? Rising or falling on the right? Rising on the right, okay? It's the fourth power, so what else is it doing? Rising on the left, right? And how many times does it cross the x-axis? four times. It has four solutions, four zeros. Okay, they all happen to be rational, real zeros. So in this case, it's crossing at four different times. Okay, we, fat, we put a number in front of everybody, multiply everybody by it, it stretches it, or if we did a fraction, it would shrink it. Okay, make sense? Okay, so what do you think you can conclude about this next one? View this one. No, it's not getting, letting me see it. So when you see x plus 3 times x minus 6 times x plus 1, what can you conclude about it? Good. It has three zeros. Three places where it crosses the x-axis, right? What else can we conclude? When we multiply it all out, what's the very first leading coefficient it's going to be? x cubed. 1x cubed, right? So what's it doing on the right? Rising, right? What's it doing on the left? Why is it falling? Odd power, opposite behavior, right? Okay, so you could now sketch this out. We know we have a zero where? Negative three. Where else do we have a zero? Positive six. Where else do we have a zero? Negative one. You know it's rising on the right, don't you? You told me that. We know it's falling on the left, don't we? It has to happen in the middle. Somehow loop and connect the dots, right? These are smooth curves. We don't know how high it's going or how low it's going, but we can sketch it, can't we? Ever think you could graph something that crazy? I didn't. I didn't do this in high school because we didn't have graphing calculators. We didn't have Desmos. So we didn't have the ability to do these things that you can do. Okay? Let's look at the next one. We want a red point as its only zero.
There's my red dot. Right there. We want a third degree polynomial. Third degree polynomial, what's another name for it? Cubic. We want a cubic with the red dot as its only zero. What's the red dot? Four, okay? So if four is its zero, what would its factor be? If four is the zero, what's its factor? X, someone said it, minus four. But that didn't do it. That's not enough. That's only a first degree. Let's try and multiply it by itself a couple times, because we want th we want four of them, right? Or uh, we want a cubic, right? I like that idea. Good strategy. Okay, so what's x minus 4 times x minus 4 times x minus 4? So x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16 is going to be x squared minus 8x plus 16, right? Now what? x minus 4 again x cubed, I'll get a negative 8x squared, plus 16x, minus 4x squared, plus 32x, what is it, minus what, 16 times 4, 64? So what are we going to get at the end? x cubed, this should be a negative, this should be a positive, minus what, 12x squared, what are we going to get here, 48, minus 64, okay, let's try it, x cubed minus 12x squared plus 48 minus 64. How do I get to do this? It's on the right one. I don't like the overview. I need to just be a student in this class. Fourth degree with these zeros. Here it is, the one with the second time around. All right, what do we get? Well, let's just do it. Let's put. Let's, let's go like this: x minus four times x minus four. So there's a square one, right? Touches it in exactly one spot. X minus four again. There's our cubic. Only crosses in that one spot. Three zeros, it's uh, zero of four with a multiplicity of two. Okay, two more times, or multiplicity of three. All right, last one. Third degree with only these points. So if we have a negative one and a two for my points as my zeros, what can we do to get a third degree polynomial with those zeros? If my zeros are negative 1 and 2, what are my factors? x plus 1 and x minus 2. That'll only get me a quadratic, right? So what would I need to do? Let's 
do another x plus 1, right? Or another x minus 2? Not quite. So I'll show you the two graphs. So if we do an x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 2, they wouldn't be the same polynomials, would they? So there's my, my black line. Now let's do the x plus 1, x minus 2, x minus 2. Okay, let me get rid of this so you can see it. And let me zoom out. It does not. Not if they're asking you for something with these zeros of with this power. Okay, so we have definitely two distinctively different graphs, right? Because we, we multiply those together, we're not going to get the same polynomial. But they definitely go through just those two points. But notice what happens here. This one comes up and just kisses the graph, doesn't it? And then it goes back down and then through. The black one, why did it only kiss negative 1? And then go back. What happened to the white, the red one? The red one just kissed two and went back up. What made it just touch it? What made it just touch it and not go and not go through? Yeah, we have two of them impacting it, right? So it's coming in. There's another one that's at the same place. And it turns it back around and says, go on your merry way. Because when we did parabolas, if we had x minus 1 quantity squared, x squared minus 2x plus 1, it only touched it. That was the vertex. So this is making a vertex of a, of a parabola, but then it has to go back and do some more because there's another, another root or another zero influencing it. OK? Does this make sense? Hopefully. Demystifying things a little bit. So I'll finish up tomorrow. Okay?